Hey everyone, welcome to Adventures in Everyday Cooking where every day can be an adventure in your kitchen. My name is Heather and today we are gonna do a turkey pot pie and a ham pot pie. But first, I would like to give away our $25 gift certificate to the High Plains Spice Company. So I've put all of the names from that video into this wheel of names and we're just gonna spin and see who wins. You ready? Let's go. All right, who's it gonna be? Who's it gonna be? Congratulations, Julie R. Stitches. You are the winner of our $25 gift certificate to High Plains Spice Company in Sterling, Colorado. Now I'll leave a link to the company in the comments below, but Julie, if you wanna get a hold of me, either on Facebook or Instagram or here on YouTube, just leave me a comment and I will get this gift certificate off to you. Now, without further ado, let's talk about our recipe today. Now, we all know that we all have leftovers and during the holiday season, sometimes it's more leftovers than you know what to do with. At least that is for me. So I love this kind of recipe. In fact, the turkey pot pie and the ham pot pie that we're gonna do today is actually a really nice nostalgia, warm and fuzzy recipe for me because when I am feeling like I need something hearty and lovely and delicious, it's a pot pie. Now, if you are gluten-free, I do have a gluten-free crust recipe that is amazing in this. I will leave a link in the comments below. However, this is gonna be just the Joe Average glutinous recipe. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, first thing we're gonna do is we are gonna get our pot or our pan, whatever it is, we're gonna get it heating and get our butter inside because we're gonna actually make a roux. Now, this recipe that I'm doing for you today actually makes two pot pies, two very large pot pies. So don't be disturbed by the amount of butter that you see going into the pan. And I just wanted to say, I have never made this before. I've eaten many, many of them, um, but I've never made it at home before. But my friend Matt posted his recipe and this is his recipe more or less. And I say more or less, because I may have cut some corners here or there because I didn't quite have all the leftovers that he had, but we're gonna go with it. So first thing you're gonna wanna do is melt your butter in a pot that is big enough to hold all of your ingredients. Now I say that because as I started to put this recipe together, I got my 12 inch skillet out and then I started to read all of the quantities and I was like, ain't that, that ain't gonna fit in there. So I moved to a stock pot so that you could see what was going on in here and I could keep all of the things contained. So we're gonna get that butter melting. As soon as it's melted, we are gonna add our flour and we're gonna add our spices, which are only thyme, salt, and pepper. Now, if your leftovers have any spices on them whatsoever, you may need to adjust your recipe. Um, because you don't want to overspice. So if your broth is really um, salty, maybe omit your spices for a little while until you know what it's going to taste like and salt it later. Does that make sense? I made my own broth. In fact, I will leave a link to my broth recipe in the comments below. Um, so I made turkey broth with the bones of my turkey the day of Thanksgiving. Like we were cleaning up and I made the broth. It was brilliant. All right, so we're looking pretty good in here. That is a ton of butter, as you can see, but we like butter in this house, and apparently Matt does too. Thanks, Matt. All right, we're almost done melting. So let's go ahead and add our one cup of flour, and we'll give that a good mix. We're basically making a really loose roux. And you could be using a whisk for this, but I find that with butter, it's fine. It doesn't matter. All right, and now we're gonna add our salt, our pepper, and our thyme. And I'm using fresh thyme, but you, the recipe actually called for um, dried thyme, but that's all I had. I only had fresh. All right, and now we are going to stir in our broth. And this is three cups of broth. 
Um, you can already see this starting to thicken up. It looks beautiful already. All right, and now we are also going to add the milk, which is one and one half cups of milk. We're gonna again gradually add this, stirring as we go, so we don't nothing sticks to the bottom of the pot. But can you see how thick that is already? That looks so delicious. All right, we are already almost done. Such an amazing recipe. So the next bit of leftovers we are gonna use are some leftover potatoes. Now, this is where I ished it. You know, his recipe ish. This is not actually leftover potatoes. This is some potatoes O'Brien that I have. They're, they are leftover, but they're not leftovers from Thanksgiving. And I did fry them up in the skillet before we started because they do kind of need to be cooked before they go in. So I just gave them a quick brown, no big deal and we're just gonna throw them right in. All right, and also we are gonna add our leftover veggies. So we're gonna need about two cups of leftover veggies. So I have here just a veggie medley um, with corn, peas, green beans, and carrots. Any type of vegetable that you have left over from Thanksgiving dinner will work. Um, this just happens to be what I have today. You could also, this doesn't have to be a leftover recipe. You could buy the frozen stuff in your grocer's frozen section um, and buy the potatoes in your, yeah, you could do anything. And that's it. That's all we're gonna do for right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off because now we need to focus on the crusts. All right, and Matt, if you are watching, you will notice that I have not added my meat in yet. That's because I'm gonna do both ham, and here we have our ham leftovers, and turkey. So I wanna do one of each, so I will probably mix them separately because I like to cheat like that. All right, so here I have just a regular Joe Average pastry crust from the store. Um, if you were making this the day of Thanksgiving or the day after Thanksgiving when you do not want to cook at all, this is ideal because it's already made for you. It's already rolled out. It's already the right size. It's perfect. If you are making this like me days later when the leftovers need to get utilized, you could spend the time and make your own crust, but again, they have it made for you in the supermarket. Why don't you best use that? Yeah. All right, so I'm gonna make the blue one, the turkey pot pie. So what we're gonna do is we're just going to press this pie crust right into the bottom of our nine inch pie shell. Okay, well, I'm just gonna grab a measuring cup and we are just gonna go for it. <laughs> So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a scoop of our beautiful sauce and pour it in. And we'll just do a few, four and four. Okay, let's stop it at four for a second and we're gonna put in our meat. So this one is going to be the turkey. And you want about a cup of meat per pie. All right, and I'm just gonna give that a little mixy mix. All right, now comes the tricky bit. We need to put this crust on the top. Unroll. And I'm gonna set it down this way because might as well work with the roll that we have, right? And it says trim and flute. Because I didn't Google what flute meant, I'm going to assume it means like crimp it a little bit so yeah let's go with that okay so we're just gonna trim around the outside of the pie crust save that stuff and decorate your pie maybe I'll make a pig a little winker pig nose sounds like a fun plan all right not bad not bad I have my little pastry roller here but I will roll one of these little strips out into maybe 
roll it into a circle for a pig nose. Does that work? That should work. Okay, the thought is make the arch of the pig nose. Do you know what I'm saying? We'll see. We'll see how that works. I'll get some glue for that in just a second. We'll get some egg wash. And then he needs a couple eyes since he's going to be a pig. All right. And now we have some eyes. And a smiley face. We need a smiley face. Da ding Okay. And see the pig nose? There's gonna be two cuts. See that? See that? See? I had a vision. Whoa. There's a lot of stuff coming out there. I might have to make some other cuts. I'll make a cut in the eye. I'll make a cut here for his cheeks. Because they're big fat cheeks. I didn't say this was an art channel. Whoa! It's smushing out. I don't know if it's supposed to smush out or not. Okay. Let's work on this uh, fluted thing. Maybe if I, this thing right here, I think I can use it for a, oh, let's hope that's right. That actually works okay, I think. I think it's only supposed to be used for pricking, but I don't know how to flute. I suppose fluting is probably like pinching and pushing. I don't know. I could guess, but this works just fine. And it's sealing the crust together, I hope. That is one scary looking pig. Oh well. There we go. Ta-da! Sir Pie is ready. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and get this started in the oven, 425 for about 45 minutes. What I am gonna do is I'm going to put it on a baking tray so that if the pig should overflow, it will catch it and my oven will be okay. All right, let's move on to this turkey one. All right, we'll open our crust. All right, crust. Here we go, going down. Okay. And I suppose we will flute or crimp before. All right, so we're gonna do the same thing here. We're gonna, just gonna use our little tool that we're not actually supposed to be using to crimp, but we're gonna use it to crimp. All right, that one doesn't look so bad. Definitely doesn't look like a deformed pig, so that's good. All right, so we are going to cut some slits into this pie this pot pie. I don't know how many are appropriate, but I will do four and pray that it doesn't explode. All right, I'm gonna get this one into the oven and I'll be back when they're all done. See you in a little while. Welcome back and as you can see, our pot pies are out of the oven. So a few things that I noticed. Um, my crimping technique definitely worked, but I did have a couple blowouts. Two in the pig one, we use the term pig lightly. A pig might be offended, but I'm sorry. And then two also in the turkey one, maybe a third one right there, just a little bit. But all in all, I think um, we are looking pretty good. The slits that I made to release the steam, which is probably why they blew out actually did not open up. I think the sauce on the inside of the pie actually was like glue because they're not open. I actually took a knife after it came out of the oven and poked into that nose and sure enough they were completely sealed. So I'm not sure what I should have done differently to be able to have those stay open but the real question is how do they taste? So we are gonna go ahead and dive into the pig one first. I'll take the pig eyeball. And these did 
um, cool for about 15 minutes. Look at that. Oh, wow. All right, let's taste the ham one, see what we think. Mmm, that's delicious. Nice and creamy, even though I didn't use any cream. It's really creamy, really delicious. That's really good, really good. All right, let's try the turkey one. Oh yeah, look at that. Amazing. All right, let's taste this one. Mmm, which one do I like better? Mm. Let's check. Shall we? Mmm. Yeah, I don't know which one I would choose as my favorite. I really like the salty of the ham and I really love what's going on in the turkey one. They're both phenomenal. So thank you, Matt, for sharing your recipe on Facebook. I don't know. Maybe next time I will try a beef one using beef broth and beef steak or beef, you know, leftover stew meat. I don't know. We'll see, this was great though. I may probably make my own crust next time, but for a leftover recipe that you just can throw together and get in the oven, this is brilliant. All right, you guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, give it a like, share it with your friends, and subscribe to my channel. There's lots of fun stuff coming now that it's Christmas season, so you'll want to stay tuned. All right, you guys, we'll see you next time. Bye. I'm gonna take them both.